breaking news came out that Keith Thurman is no longer that interested in a Ugas title fight as he did previously before Errol Spence fought Manny Pacman Pacquiao. And he's open to a Jamel Charlo fight because he believes it will open doors to finally fight Errol Spence since that's his teammate. With that being said, what doesn't make a whole lot of sense is for Keith Thurman to continuously call out Errol Spence and begging him to give him an opportunity coming off a loss. Keep in mind, it was Keith Thurman himself that never gave Errol Spence an opportunity when he had a title and was stopping fighters. When he wanted that fight as bad as he wanted to breathe before tables turn. But at this moment in time, we passed that point. So how can one time get a shot at Errol Spence just one time? It ain't no secret. Errol Spence long time goal is to become undisputed at welterweight, in which we all know the title holders are Errol Spence, Terence Crawford, and Ugas. Therefore, it doesn't take a genius to figure out if Keith Thurman really wants to get the Errol Spence fight instead of sitting down doing nothing for years. After coming off a loss, we know that's not the way to get the Arrow fight. How about cut off the supply and demand by fighting and beating one of the title holders? That's exactly how you get yourself back in the mix, back in the conversation, by winning an actual title. Errol then will have no choice but to entertain Keith Thurman. However, sitting on the bench, putting blame on everyone except the person in the mirror, that ain't the way to go. That will get one time nowhere. What I can't understand or comprehend is the fact that when news came out earlier this year, that Errol Spence was negotiating with Ugas in order to set up a title unification bout. Since the WBA placed Pacquiao as the champion in recess for negotiating with Conor McGregor and Ryan Garcia, who trolled Pacquiao to losing his title, that's when the WBO elevated Ugas to a super champion. Now, it was so shocking for the people that don't know. At the time, when Errol started to negotiate with Ugas to set up a fight, Keith Thurman quickly came in between in order to ruin the party. Thurman took it upon himself to reach out to Ugas personally in order to entice him in to fight him first because that way, if he is victorious, he's gonna receive a bigger bag fighting Errol Spence. Keith went out of his way to steal Errol Spence's opponent. And when Errol turned around to fight Manny Pacman Pacquiao instead, after that opportunity presented itself. Shockingly, that's the moment when Keith Thurman pulled back on the Ugas fight. Automatically, he completely abandoned the fight. Keep in mind, Ugas is still the WBA super champion till this day. To make matter worse, Ugas was desperately searching for a name opponent to fight on the undercard of Errol versus Manny Pacman Pacquiao fight. The co-main event. However, Keith Thurman was nowhere to be found. There is no better position Keith Thurman could have put himself in if he would have fought Ugas on Errol undercard, the co-main event. Because if he was victorious against Ugas, he gets to win a world title against a top five welterweight in the division. Then he has the best platform to call out Errol Spence on his own card, the co-main event. There is no better setup. There is no better lead up to a fight than that. But guess what? Keith Thurman passed on that opportunity in order to call out Errol Spence on all of the social media platforms instead. Due to all of the above, the sleeping giant Ugas had to settle with fighting Maidana on the co-main event to Errol Spence versus Manny Pacman Pacquiao fight, where it could have been Keith Thurman instead of Maidana. That's why it comes off like Keith Thurman is really obsessed with Errol at this moment in time. Furthermore, here is exactly what Keith Thurman told the boxing voice, which I'm gonna leave the link for the full video in the description box below. So but I don't wanna leave and not bring up this Ugas uh, Thurman rumor, especially got a little hotter after your press conference, well, 
Earl's press conference, but you were there. Then all of a sudden, the rumors picked up of you and Ugas. What's up with that? What do you think about that? If it were to manifest, it's a good fight. It's a good fight you know, um, Ugas is a respectable champion. Um, he got a great fight style. Uh, the Cuban, you know, he knows what he's doing. Uh, he put uh, a great performance on Sean Porter. He was a little hesitant. He was walking Porter down. He wasn't letting his hands go. And I think he let the judges take that from him. Um, a, a lot of people felt like that. But I, you gotta, you got to be in the position to let the judges take it. It wasn't something where, you know, he fully, fully, fully deserved to have his hand raised and they just didn't raise it. I think he left a little bit of the food on the table and he didn't gobble up that meal he didn't go and get that check he didn't take the belt from the champion say look you the champ but today not not anymore boom my title you know um i think he's learned from that and i just think it, i think it is a legitimate great fight in the walter Wade division for me to fight who guys um i i haven't heard a date i've heard rumors weird rumors on what's going on with ugas um is it ugas thurman Time will tell, you know. Last fantasy fight, obviously, again, because of the numbers. You know, we know this is a business. You did well on pay-per-view. Jamel got this draw. He's got a IBF mandatory, but if they offered you that fight, is that something you would be interested in, Jamel Charlo, for those belts? On, on pay-per-view, obviously, them trying to use you as the name to put him on pay-per-view. He did do a pay per view with his brother. It would be before. hard. It'd be hard to say no to all the belts. It'd be hard to say no to making history and um, becoming a champion once again in a new weight class. Um, I'm here for the love of the sport. Um, I love the credentials I have. I want to further my credentials, and that fight entices me as far as um, lining up to further my credentials. You know, and then worst case scenario, right? I fall short. Darman's probably hop right back in the welterweight division. You know what I mean? But um, I've always had small admirations to move up, but I just always felt that it would be a little bit more in that 34, 35 um, age bracket, maybe even at the last chapter and the 36 and beyond. Um, so it's never been at the forefront of my mind yet. Um, it's always been like a, poss a, a maybe later kind of issue. But, you know, too many belts. Too much, too much for the history books. I might, have, I might have to sign up. Al calls you this week, like you said, and he says, "Look, Thurman, you've been great. You've always done my inaugurals. I'm, I'm giving you Tank, Jamal James, or Jamel Charlo. What does Thurman say? You get the choice out of either three. It'd be easy to take." Uh, I would have to I would have to think about it, but you know, Tank seems exciting. It's right at welterweight. I get to do me. He gets to try to make make history for him. Moving up, I get to try to make a, a, a new history. But once if I win, then I gotta defend at 54. You know what I mean? And then I can be like, oh yeah, EJ, you wanna move up, right? Did you wanna move up? <laughs> I moved up first, you know? So look, I mean And that's there's, a stable man. There's, there's, there's a lot uh, you know, in the fantasy world, I'll just have to say it would have to be a toss up between those two great pay per view fights, you know, over over a simple welterweight fight that I don't think would bring um, the same level of excitement. Um, and the complexities of the matchups, right? You got um, the complexity of a little man coming into the welterweight division, then me moving up. Um, I just kind of like the dynamics of, of the complexities of those matchups. So it, I, I would really have to ponder, really sit down, go over everything, look at uh, which one uh, would get uh, more attention, and then go from there. As you all heard, Keith Thurman is oblivious to the Ugas fight even though they on the same stable, even though they were in talks earlier this year. So if Keith Thurman wants the Errol Spence fight, why he has no clue on what's going on with Ugas? Matter of fact, Keith Thurman should have been the one that was pushing for this fight as bad as he want to breathe if he sincerely wanted to fight Errol Spence. But playing along with I'm lost in the sauce is not going to cut it. We all know Ugas wants the fight. Therefore, that only could mean one thing. 
This is chapter two of when Keith Thurman was telling Errol Spence, I didn't turn down the fight. I never received a contract, even though Errol was calling him out steady. Like I said before, I don't understand how Keith Thurman thinks he's going to get the Errol Spence fight by talking instead of fighting. Ugas was a perfect ticket to an Errol Spence fight. However, Keith is only interested in Ugas if Errol Spence was negotiating with him. But since Errol had someone else to fight, which made Ugas completely available, Keith Thurman was nowhere to be found. On the other hand, when it came to the Jamel Charlo fight, you really can't take Keith Thurman serious anymore based on his action. Even then, we know that's not a realistic fight since Jamel has to defend his IBF title against his mandatory. Then he has the rematch with Castano for Undisputed. And last but not least, the rematch with Lubin for the WBO mandatory. So that's a long time from now and nothing is guaranteed. Furthermore, Keith Thurman had made outrageous statements as of late, such as Errol is only fighting Manny Pacman Pacquiao because of him. Well, duh, when you lose, you have no say so. What Keith Thurman has to realize is that Errol Spence is fighting the man that beat one time. So why will Keith Thurman opinion matters when Errol is fighting the winner, not the loser? That's why Keith Thurman sound delusional when he makes comments like Arrow is eventually going to run out of competition. Really? In the deepest roster in boxing, the PBC? In the deepest two divisions, 147 and 154? He's going to run out of competition? I don't think so. And what makes matter worse, what Keith has to realize the fight that everyone, the whole boxing world, want to see is Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. Not Errol versus one time. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want to see Keith Thurman fight Errol and Terrence Crawford, so on and so forth. Those are very entertaining fights in and out of the ring. But Keith Thurman has to put himself back in position by fighting instead of talking. With that being stated, drop your thoughts in the comment section below, subscribe below, and click on the notification bell to be continued on the next episode of Aki Aki Ak TV. Peace, and I'm on to the next one.